everyone and welcome to this video on scales and social work research. This is part two of a video series. Make sure you go watch part one first before watching this part. In this video, I'll be going over specific types of scales that are used in research. There's what's called a semantic differential format. And in this case, we, oh shoot, this was an example. Hold on, let me go back. Okay, so in a semantic differential format, we're giving respondents a scale on two ends of an extreme. So for example, let's say I'm asking um, uh, respondents, considering the pair of adjectives below, please describe what you think about the issue of universal health insurance. And then I give them options on a continuum, on two ends of a continuum, or what will be a scale, which is, you know, let's say boring or interesting. And then I ask them, when considering these options, which side of this continuum do they fall on? You know, very much boring, somewhat boring, neither, somewhat interesting, very much interesting. And I might give them some boxes to check. So they have to check one box. And then they'll give them um, other adjectives to think about. You know, simple to complex. Is this very much simple, somewhat simple, etc. cetera. Um, don't care, care, <laughs> uh, useless, useful, um, all the while giving them these options. So what the person is actually seeing is all of this together. And then they go through and they, uh, you know, make their choices. I, it doesn't have to be boxes where they check, it can also be numbers. But in any case, this is what it looks like. And then we have the Thurston's Equal appear, bleh, Appearing Interval Scale. Okay, this one's a little complicated, but I'm going to break it down. Um, so just kind of follow along. It's used to generally measure attitudes, which could be why we don't see this a lot in social work research. Um, it's mostly used in the other social science, especially, let's say, um, uh, you know, sociology. But in any case, it's, it's important to know that it is an option, um, but it's very complicated and time consuming, so that could be also why it isn't used as much, um, but it has very good reliability. Okay, let's say again with my example of universal health insurance, I wanna know people's opinions. The first step is to come up with a large number of statements that describe opinions people might have about health insurance. And when I say large, I mean like 50 to 100 different statements. That's step one. Um, so, oh, I wanted to give an example. Health insurance is a privilege, not a right. This is an example of a statement that I might uh, come up with. Another one, health insurance should be government run. Another statement. Okay, once I have all my 100 statements, I get uh, several judges, people who are you know experts in this field, uh, to read each statement and give it a score from one to 11 in terms of how favorable it is. It's not their opinion about it, like their own, but just reading this statement, is this a favorable statement? And the scale for this goes from one to 11, unfavorable to favorable. It could also go the other way, favorable versus unfavorable, just depending on uh, you know what the person's interested in. But for our case with the health insurance one, I feel like this, this way um, works best and is more easily understood. Okay, so again, each statement that they read gets this rating. So let's say I have Health insurance should be government run. A judge research, uh, I mean, um, an expert reads this statement and they would circle one of these. So let's say this particular judge um, circled 11, that this is a favorable statement. Another one says, well, it's kind of a 10. Another one gives it a rating of eight and another one gives it a rating of 11. And so these 20 or more judges all read each statement giving their thoughts on how favorable it is. And then the researcher looks at each statement and how all the judges scored it. So again, with let's say health insurance should be government run as a statement. Judge number one gave it a seven, so did judge number two, et cetera, et cetera. Again, on this scale of unfavorable to favorable. 
Now I have to calculate the median for each statement. The median is the value above and below which 50% of the ratings fall. So I will calculate that median and also its variability. I'm not going to go into exactly how to do the variability because um, it has to do with percentiles and you don't need to know that at this point. But just know that um, we want to know not just where the halfway point is, but you know how far away from that halfway point people rated. So again, with our statement, and let's say this is all of the judges. I only have room to put 10, but you would imagine there would be 20. Um, and then I would just, the simplest way to uh, calculate a median was just to order them, order their ratings from uh, smallest to highest, and then look at the halfway point, which would be right here, okay? So um, in this case, this is, you know, 50% of the, the ratings were um, uh, below, nine and 50% were above nine. So then if the statement's ratings are all over the place, then we would throw that statement out. So in this case, the statements are going from seven to 11, um, and, you know, two points or so above the median and below the median. I would say that's probably okay, but you know, the researcher has to be the judge of that. And that's why we use more sophisticated techniques than just eyeballing it like I'm doing here. We would actually calculate percentiles and things to, to make an informed decision. But in any case, that's the decision that needs to be made, whether this statement is, you know, not consistent in its ratings. Okay. So then if a statement's ratings have less variability, then we calculate, I mean, then we keep it and calculate the, the median. So in this case, let's say this was, um, I'm just giving another example just to be um, less variable. So let's say this uh, is all the ratings and this is the median. When we calculate it, it actually ends up being, let's say a 10, um, round it up. So we pick one or two statements that fall at each point on the 11 point scale that have the least variability in the ratings. Then we put all the statements in one survey. So let's say these are five statements um, out of several. Health insurance should be government run. It's a privilege, not a right. Everyone should have it. It should be affordable. Uh, Pre-existing conditions should keep people from getting health insurance, et cetera. You know, all the different types of statements, favorable and unfavorable, all along the, the scale. So respondents just have to indicate whether they agree or disagree with each statement. So health insurance, et cetera. So it's just a dichotomous response option, you know, yes or no, do you agree, disagree, agree, etc. The next step in scoring the survey involves looking at just the statements that the respondents agree to and then using the medians for each statement as follows. I know, but like, why did we have to calculate those medians? Well, here's why, because they're important in um, the scoring. So then, we have all of our statements and in parentheses, we have all the medians for each statement, okay? And I look at, let's say this particular person only agreed with these two statements. So what would that look like? Well, the as I said, this person agreed with statement one and three. Statement one's median was a 10.2, statement, oh, right there. <laughs> statement two's median was a 10.8. So I get an average of these two medians. So 10.2 plus 10.8 equals 21. And because there's two of them, I divide by two and I get an average of 10.5. So this 10.5 is this person's score on this particular scale. Okay, so yeah, as you can see, it's a very complicated. Um, it was very difficult to explain, but I hope that this helped. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the cumulative slash Gutman scale. So in this case, this involves asking a series of questions such that responses are in progressing intervals. For example, 
please check each question that you would respond with a yes answer. And let's say I'm interested in attitudes towards immigrate, immigrants and immigration. One, are you willing to permit immigrants to live in your country? Two, are you willing to permit Im immigrants to live in your community, to live in your neighborhood, to live next door to you? Would you let your child marry an immigrant? Okay, so as you can see, as we're going down in these questions, um, acceptance, favorableness is increasing. So the respondent to this question would, answer, would put a check on just the ones that they agree with or that they say yes to. And let's say this person um, stopped at three. What is that three? What does that score mean? Well, the three means that they're kind of in the halfway um, point, right? They're, they're not quite as accepting as someone who would have scored a four or a five, but they're more accepting, right, than the twos and the ones. Uh, what we want to get from this is that a person who scored a three also answered yes to the previous two. So that's the cumulative part. And that's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Or if you're in my class, email me. Okay, see you next time. Bye.